So, thank you so much for having a chat with me. Why don't we start off by uh, you introducing yourself? My name is Jay Weinberg, and I play drums in Slipknot. Now, your first few singles, The Chapel Time Rag, The Dying Song, Yen, they've, they were the first ones to come out. Does that kind of give the audience a taster of, of what the album is? I do think The Chapel Town Rag, The Dying Song, and Yen uh, kind of give the audience a taste of uh, sort of a synopsis of what the whole record kind of circles around. Um, we definitely go into some more adventurous areas than those songs might suggest. But, you know, I think kind of it kind of bridges the gap from where we've been to where we're going. And um, and yeah, those those three songs seem to be a, uh, a good little cross section of, um, you know, this this newest creative effort. Um, yeah, really proud of, uh, of those three songs. Now, you must have some standout tracks from the record and, and what makes them special for you? There are a few standout tracks to me personally, I think both from a process standpoint and from a finished result standpoint. Um, you know, songs like Hive Mind, uh, you know, that comes to mind because that's one of the songs that really came together quite impulsively and quickly, um, similar to some songs that we've done on previous records. Uh, the Negative One and Custer kind of came about in a similar way where we're in the same room and we're just kind of throwing energy out and all of a sudden, two hours later, we have a finished song, pretty much. Um, Hive Mind came about in that sort of way. Other songs that we've been working on for a long, long time, uh, like Medicine for the Dead, we've been kicking around that song for close to seven or eight years. Um, and we just kind of feel like now it's, you know, crossed the finish line and we're ready to uh, to share it. Um, other songs like Acidic, uh, to me, really stand out because that's kind of, you know, daring, it's Slipknot daring to go into sonic spaces that we really haven't before. Um, and to me, that's like my favorite part of the recording and writing process is just like, you know, doing stuff that might surprise us that we don't really necessarily know if it fits within the Slipknot wheelhouse, but we kind of work on it, work on it, work on it, and then it, it becomes a Slipknot song. So, yeah, between Hive Mind and Medicine for the Dead and Acidic, those are, uh, those are songs that really stand out to me personally. Good, good. And uh, talk to us about the, the writing and the recording process, especially for the end so far. Was it difficult writing and kind of creating ideas in, in a pandemic? It was definitely difficult uh, to complete a record, you know, in the midst of a global pandemic. Um, we're not the only band that dealt with it, um, especially considering that none of us really live near each other. Uh, we had to become quite adept at self-recording, self-engineering, uh, myself recording my own drums to work on ideas as I'm getting, you know, riffs kind of sent to me from guys and just starting to put stuff together. Um, you know, so in that respect, it was a unique challenge that we hadn't really done all that much before. Because in the past, you know, we would get together for about like a month at a time and work on stuff and edit things and, and whatever. Uh, that's definitely the process that we kind of really immerse ourselves in when we were making We Are Not Your Kind. But for the end so far, it was quite different. You know, but uh, but we just had to overcome that. It was just another challenge that, you know, we're not going to shy away from and we're going to try to do our best, um, you know, given the certain constraints that were not just given to us, but all, you know, musicians worldwide, pretty much. And then once we got all the stuff to a certain level of completion in like the demo phase, then the real work starts of like actually going into a studio and recording it for real. It was difficult, but, but you know, we had a great team with us as well, working with Joe Barisi for the first time, kind of as, you know, our co-producer, as well as like a project manager, sort of, to keep us all on track. And even though we were all kind of building this record in sort of isolated capacities, you know, but together, it was a little odd, but, um, but you know, it was it was what we had to do to uh, to get this music made and i think you know given the situation that that we were all dealt I, I think we're quite pleased with uh with how the record has come out yeah yeah cool now does your mentality and approach to writing songs change as you've kind of gotten older and and what kind of inspires you to to write new slipknot songs 
I think as far as like the mentality and approach to writing songs and crafting them in the studio and really just trying to throw ourselves into the music as much as we can, it definitely does change, you know, as you get older, um, you know, this being my third record with the band. Um, I've definitely learned over the years after, you know, nine, almost 10 years of being in the band. You know, the live show really informs what we do, which I kind of think back on making the Grey chapter is like incredibly ironic that we made an album without even playing a single show together uh, because so much of what we do is on stage. It, it informs pretty much everything. And that definitely does affect it. And I think as you get older, you know, your your tastes and inspirations uh, change and evolve, even though, you know, what I enjoyed, you know, back when I was a kid still, I'm sure, finds its way into my own contributions to our music. It's probably that way for a lot of us. But you have different things that you want to say. You have different things that you want to express because, you know, you're that many years down the line of being a person and, and having life experience to to draw from. So... Yeah, the the mentality maybe stays a little bit the same in that, you know, we want to throw 100% of ourselves into it. But the approach and uh, and the end result, I think, does change as you uh, as you get a little bit older. And, um, you know, you just want to do different stuff. You don't want to do the same things you did 10 years ago, you know, or 20 years ago uh, for, for guys in the band, you know. So, uh, so yeah, it's always a constant kind of changing, evolution, ev- uh, evolving thing, as it should be. And, uh, and that's perfectly fine. Now, you had a busy summer with plenty of, of festivals. How was it for you to be back? And which songs did you include in, in the set? And which ones can we expect in the, in the UK? Uh, coming back to Europe after quite a long time of not being there was amazing. Um, you know, it's such a great second home for us, really. Um, you know, certain festivals that we're playing for the first time, it was just incredible to, you know, to break ground there you know, play certain countries that we've never played before. That was an amazing opportunity. Uh, and also to to revisit some places that we, we have played quite a bit. Um, it was really special to to get back and just celebrate the fact that we're we're back at it. We're, we're doing it. Yeah, so that was awesome. And we were able to include some new material, playing the Chapel Town Rag, playing Dying Song for the first time. Uh, that was awesome. And, uh, and hopefully it is a, a sign of, you know, more things to come, more doors to... Uh, to open and uh, and to revisit places that we haven't been in a long time, the UK certainly being one of them, and uh, and yeah, so it's uh, quite an exciting time, and the fact that we're able to get out of our home country and uh, and bring our music to far off distant lands, it's you know it's one of the things that we're most proud of doing. So to get back out at it is uh, is quite a treat for sure. Good, and uh, you've now released what seven albums now. Don't you don't seem to be slowing down and and kind of lacking the hunger? What kind of keeps you going? What's the secret? Yeah, there certainly doesn't seem to be any slowing down or uh, lack of of hunger to to do what we do. Um, I don't think there's really any secret to it. I think it's just you know you have the passion and the drive to to strive to make something great and and lasting and uh, and get your you know, your creativity out there. That's what it's all about for us. And, um, you know, I think that's how this band started. It certainly is the way, you know, the band is now. It's what it's what keeps everybody doing it. Um, you know, we wouldn't do it if we didn't get that uh, creative and um, expressive satisfaction out of, out of doing what Slipknot demands of us. So yeah, you know, it's uh, it's been seven albums of, of Slipknot and certainly no signs of slowing down. So, uh, so it's a good time. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for listening.